This is Tuesday, November the 3rd of 2015, and I'm representing the Friends of the Marshall Public Library in our oral history project. And today I have Sue Snedeker with me here in the library. She's a long-term resident of Marshall, and I think probably has a lot of memories of both her childhood in the country and also her living in town and what she's done since. So with that, I'll introduce you to Sue. Well, my name is, full name is Margaret Sue Amaker Snedeker, and I was born June the 3rd in 1944 at the home of my grandparents, Otto and Bertha Amaker. About 5.30 in the morning, I believe, if I recall, and uh, Mom and Dad had taken my older sister up to drop them off at Grandma's while they took me onto the ho Mom onto the hospital, and I decided I was in a hurry and I didn't want to go to the hospital, so I was born in Grandma's bed. <laughs> And I've lived my entire life in Clark County, even all my life in Marshall Township. I, my parents were Chris and Nora Ohm Amaker. They were farmers. And I have one sister, Kay. And the unusual part, part probably is her name and my name are both Snedeker now. I met my husband, Kenny, at my sister's wedding when she and her husband, Ted, got married. And our husbands are biologically cousins, but they were raised as brothers. So Sis and I both have the Snedeker name. My husband, Kenny, and I have raised four children. Our two oldest sons, Van and Gary, are deceased. Our daughter, Flossie, lives here in Marshall, and son, Kevin, and his wife, Nan, live across the field from us down in the country. We've got nine grandchildren, six girls and three boys, and our one grandson, Jai, is deceased. We have nine great-grandchildren and are expecting number 10 in December. Oh when Sis and I were growing up, we were fortunate to have two sets of grandparents. My dad's mom and dad, Bertha and Otto Amaker, mm -hmm. and my mother's parents, Ernest and Cora Ohm. And we had two great-grandmothers on my mom's side. We had Grandma Rosa Kyle and Elizabeth Ohm. So I said they were both great grandmothers and great grandma Kyle helped raise my mother a little bit when she was a baby. So grandma became semi blind in mm. the, her eighties and she took turns staying with her children and my mother was classified as a child because she had helped raise her, so she took her turn staying with us also. So we had the privilege of being around Great Grandma quite a bit. That's wonderful. Most children today, at least, do not have an opportunity to even maybe know their grandparents. Absolutely. If they don't know them, they live far away from them, one or the other, and they don't have that privilege, but so we you did. You mentioned you were born at Grandma's. Where was that location? Uh, about three miles southwest of Marshall. Okay. On yeah. Fox, right off of Fox oh, Road, good. corner okay. of Fox and Arbuckle today. Okay. Yeah. So. Is that house still there? It is. Uh, it's not near as attractive as it used to be, but it's still there. How and I, I own all the farm ground around it. Okay. The house got sold off by my uncle, but I do own the farm ground that goes around it. So are there other residents or buildings close by? Oh, close enough you can see them. They're not real close, but yeah, they're close enough you can see them. Are any of the other families still there? No, well, my sister lives right down the road from me. She built a home there in the 70s, and then our son just lives across the road from us. So we have, there's always been three relatives that lived right there close together. It was Grandpa and Uncle George and my dad, and now it's my sister, myself, and our son. So there's, That's unusual also. we keep them all in the neighborhood. <laughs> okay. If you've ever heard of Beer Bomb Corner, that's close to where we are on Beer Bomb Corner. Okay. We're a half mile west of Beer Bomb Corner. And I feel very fortunate that I am now living on the old Amaker home place that belonged to my great-great-grandparents. 
it's been in the family all these years and passed down and I have it now and I'm very fortunate to be living there. That's great. And I also own, as I said, up by where my grandpa and grandma lived, that was the uh, original Eccle ground, which was my great great grandparents also. And so I have some of the Eccle ground and some of the Amaker ground both. Have you ever researched that to see if it qualifies for the Centennial Farm or they, Centennial? They are both in the Centennial. Good. Good. And there's been a new farm book published in the past year on Centennial oh. Farms in Illinois, and both of the farms are in there. I made Wonderful. sure of that. Good. Because I really love history, and I, do, you do. <laughs> and I made sure that both of the farms got in the history. Great. When you were uh, growing up, where did you go to school? I went to North School my first year. Oh, you did come into town then? Yes. I, I missed the cutoff date. My sister okay. went to the country school down at Cyberly one year, and then they consolidated, and she started to town, and that's where they went, where we went when I started. And then I went second grade in the Ohio building, mm -hmm. and then I went to... The South School, my third through sixth grade. What do you remember about that old North School building? I remember the most I remember was on recess. We went outside as girls, and we there were huge maple trees, and a lot of them had rot in them, and the the uh, brown rot like that came out. We played like that was brown sugar. And we built houses in the leaves. We arranged rooms and we raked the leaves up and made rooms and played house and that brown sugar we cooked with. And we had a lot of fun out there in the leaves. <laughs> there was not a lot of playground equipment. No, we, went there we jumped rope a lot and we played jacks a lot. And I remember one time taking a, one of my turtles to school and one of the big kids took my turtle away from me and I was crying because I wanted my turtle back, which I guess I got back. <laughs> Don't remember that part. I just remember crying because the big boy took my turtle away from me. Do you remember anything in particular about the interior inside of the school? The one thing that stands out <coughs> was one the year we had, um, that, that was the only year I was there, we went upstairs way up in the attic, I guess you would call it, to have our school picture taken. Oh. And I thought it was very, very scary to go that far up because it was a big building. When I went there, <laughs> Von Arne used to come down once a week and we would go up to the third floor. There's a piano up there. <clears throat> we had a music lesson. I don't remember or music. Saying. So you went uh, quite a bit after I did. Yeah, I don't remember music. I'm sure we had it, but I don't recall. But I think shortly music. after that, and probably after you, that was <laughs> off limits, mm -hmm. and there was a very narrow stairway to get up there. And That's uh, probably where we went to have our picture uh, taken that was, time. I'm sure. There were skylights, <coughs> and it had uh, some natural light that mm -hmm. came out. nice and bright. That's probably why they took us up there. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of your teachers? Rosa Smith was my teacher, and I would say she was a stern teacher. <laughs> there were three in our class that wrote left-handed, and she did not believe in left-handed people, and she had a ruler, and she would crack you across the knuckles when you wrote, and she caught you. And I was a little bit ambidextrous enough that she broke me of writing left-handed. The other two kids still write left-handed today. I was wondering if you'd converted. But I cannot read my writing today, and I think it's a lot because I don't write with the hand I should have. Okay. Have you ever thought of going back? A lot of things I still do really? left-handed. I don't write left-handed, but I do, and our, and our youngest son is left-handed, so I think he got that from mother. <laughs> but... Uh, Going back to the playground at North uh, North School, I remember part of that, I think it was around the teeter-totter and the uh, maybe the merry-go-round was uh, really just crushed rock and uh, cinders. And if you fell down, you had a skin knee. I just quickly. remember the dirt. I don't even That's remember right. cinders or rock. It was just more or less yeah. dirt. 
and I don't really remember playing on them that much. We girls were always jumping rope or playing hopscotch or jacks. It seems like that's what I remember the most. I don't re really recall the playground equipment that much. So you did ride the bus then, I guess? In the yes. School. We lived north of Marshall when I started first grade. Mom always said I cried for three years because I wanted to go to school with my sister, and I cried for three years after because I had to. <laughs> I never was a school lover. But we started school, I started school when we lived north of town, so you had to go to the north school. Okay. And we moved in midterm in January down south of town where I live now. And so the bus dropped us off on 6th Street because it did not go to the North School and we walked over to the school then. Any particular memories from school bus riding? No. Not. Only I, the only thing I remember is when we lived north of town those roads were bad in the winter time and when the January thaw came the bottom went out of the roads and there was nothing there and we'd have to have tractors pull us through and I hated that road. You don't remember having snow days then, do you? No, we <laughs> did not itself. have snow days then. You went to school. Regardless. Regardless. And make the bus it, the rest drove you there. through and yes, and if you didn't make it, you didn't make it. Right. So, you one, time, one time yeah. I got in trouble with Mrs. Smith too. The little girl in front of me, I pulled her pigtails or something and I got in trouble for that. I don't know why I was bad and did that, but I think I did do that. <laughs> did your seat still have the uh, ridge up there yes. to put the pencils in and probably a hole for the inkwell? Yes. Too. They were the ones in the rows. Mm -hmm. Not the most comfy things either to sit in. No, there. but we didn't know any different. We, we just did what we had to do with. <laughs> From uh, school, you mentioned a pet turtle. Did you have another pet at home, too, or was that your, your well, prime pet? My sister and I, where we lived north of town, there was a back porch, and it had, it was kind of in between two rooms. So there was only one outside edge to it, and my dad put a board across that, and Kay and I would go out in the woods and catch box turtles, and we'd tape numbers on the back of them, and we'd have turtle races. We'd set our turtles at the end of the porch and watch to see which one got to the other end. And I guess that was why one of them I took to school and was upset because I didn't get it back. I think I did get it back. But we always had dogs and we always had cats, but they were just barn cats. They weren't really pets. And uh, we had a goat at one time, but the goat got in trouble. He got to climbing on the car. He'd climb up on the car and slide down the other side and, and my dad took the gun and went out and shot in the air to scare him and he had a heart attack I guess because his dad did not shoot him but the goat died and my sister bawled her head off. <laughs> she thought it was terrible. What was the goat's name? Do you remember? I don't remember sure the you had goat. A name. Probably did but I just remember he got in trouble for climbing up on dad's car. Oh dear. So do you have a pet today? Oh yes. I have my favorite dog. I've always had my favorite dog. I couldn't tell you how many favorite dogs I've had. But we have two dogs and two cats and 15 chickens. And I had to sell my donkeys. They got old and feeble and I got old and feeble so I sold them. <laughs> so I don't have those anymore. When you were growing up either in town or in country, did you have some chores and things that you had to do around home? Oh yes, always. Uh, help milk the cows. That was one of my chores before I went to school was to milk the cow. Old Jers was my cow that I always milked. Was, she was a Jersey, of course, is why I called her Old Jers. And uh, I helped gather the eggs and worked in the garden. And you always had chores you had to do. Was there a favorite thing that you had, and maybe one that you didn't like? My favorite was as long as I was outside. I love to be outside, and I still do. 
when we got older, of course, we helped with the farm chores mm -hmm. too, like baling hay. And we baled hay right along with the guys. I know one thing I remember, I only remember one year, and then Dad got a corn picker, but we shucked corn by hand with the bang board on the back of the on the side of the wagon and it was January and cold and my hands froze to death trying to shell that or shuck that corn. The bushels per acre was not very high oh, then either was it? No, not at all. With the uh, going back to your your grandfather and I may be wrong on this story, but didn't he help lay the brick in the National Road? That may have been, but I don't remember ever hearing that. Okay. There were, there were a lot of things my family never talked about. I don't know. I, I do know that, see, my great, I got this right, my great, great, great grandfather, Amaker, was the one that came here and settled. That was Chris and Margaret. By the way, I'm named after her my great-great-grandmother and also my great-aunt were both named Margaret, so that's where I got my Margaret, proud of that name. But he was cutting timber. They had built the granary and they were building the barn, and I'm not sure where they were living. Maybe in the little log cabin. They must have maybe already built the little log cabin mm -hmm. and they had built the granary and they were building the barn and a, and a tree fell on him and killed him. And my great-grandfather was only like 15 at the time. Mm -hmm. And he stayed and helped his mom get things going. You know, I mean, the neighbors came in and helped too and get the barn up. and. And I remember them talking about that, but that's really about all I ever heard them talk about. Okay. And uh, my great, got to think here, my great great grandfather on the Eccles side had a blacksmith shop up on Fox Road. And that's how they got part of their farm ground. There was a family wanting to go west, and they needed a wagon built, so he built a Conestoga okay. wagon for them in exchange for that farm oh. ground. Wow. And uh, I do have part of that ground yet today. That's what I was getting ready mm -hmm. to ask. I do part have of part of that wonderful. ground yet today. Well, that's kind of the memories, and again, the purpose of the oral history is to yeah. find out some of those things that took place back there. But that's how they bartered back <coughs> then. They didn't have a lot of money, and they bartered more back then than we do today, and we should be doing now. And you mentioned something about uh, neighbors and all helping with, uh, with an accident. Um, do you think that's something that has really changed? That You have a neighbor, but it's not the neighborly right. feeling that you used to have. I have gone to the genealogical library and looked up in old, magazine, old newspapers about some of my family and how it would tell how they went and visited with their neighbors on Sunday afternoon. And, and it's changed a lot from that. And even when I was growing up, you know, it's changed. Yes, you're right. They're there, but they're not there. Well, I remember growing up as a youngster, we always had a visit with Grandma and Grandpa on the weekend, usually on a Sunday, and many times had a meal with them. Mm -hmm. And you spent the day, or we would go visiting with one of my other relatives. I don't think that takes place hardly at all anymore. I don't think so either. My folks had several there were not several, but they had some families of friends, and they would come and spend Sunday, and we'd all eat together, or we'd go to their house, and we'd all eat and spend the afternoon playing. And Do you remember reading some of the social pages of the Clark County Democrat or the uh, yes. Marshall Herald? Yes. I could tell you a little story about that. Okay, good. Kathleen Bennett used to do that in the... Democrat, and she'd call and get information, and one time when our youngest son was just small, I was out doing chores, and he came out and he told me that she was on the phone, and I said something to, him, to the effect that she was just wanting gossip, and he went back and told her that, <laughs> that I was so embarrassed. Kids tell the truth. That they tell what they hear. Uh -huh. But <clears throat> I used to enjoy reading those columns, and I've thought, 
there's there's no need for those columns today because people don't do that. Yeah, they don't do that. They they don't communicate. They uh, watch TV or they on the computer or they're gone. Or cell phone. In their vehicles or something. But I remember they used to have reports of so-and-so visited Mrs. So-and-so and someone went to Terre Haute with so-and-so. And it was, uh, by today's standards, it looked kind of silly, but that was their means of communicating what people were doing. Absolutely. That's exactly how they communicated, was through the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And if they were fortunate enough, by phone, I didn't have a telephone in our house till I was 16 years old. And my grandkids can't believe that. I mean, they have a cell phone glued to their ear today. All the time. <laughs> and they can't understand that we had an outhouse. Heaven forbid. Yeah, how did you survive? And we had no telephone. I can remember no electricity. We only had the cook stove to cook by and the heating stove in the living room to keep heat. And that... <laughs> Dad cut the wood for both of those stoves, and we carried it in. And it got a little warm in August, too, didn't it? Yes. In, in the kitchen, it got real warm when you had to bake, and my mom could bake perfect on that stove. She made the best homemade bread. That's the first thing she taught me to cook was to make sweet rolls. And I've never been able to make them like Mother did. They don't taste like Mom's did. They were delicious, what she made. You keep trying, though, right? I keep trying, but it just doesn't work like that. But, yes, uh, she did all of the cooking. Of course, when I was really young, as we got older, we bought some milk, but we had our own milk cows, and Mom made her own butter and her own cottage cheese. And and uh, she ne we never came to the store much except for like flour and sugar because we had such a large garden. We had a garden and then we had a what they called the truck patch and that's where the potatoes and the corn and everything was and she canned all the time. And How about taking things out of the garden to get them ready for winter? We had a basement or a cellar that we stored mm -hmm. them in to preserve. And I can remember when we butchered, my mom and most people said they don't ever remember this, but my mom and grandma Amaker would work together and they would fry up huge batches of sausage patties and then they'd put them in jars and pour the grease over them and can the sausage patties. And mom would fix big roast and then she'd tear the meat up and put it in jars and put broth on it and cook that so, or can it so then in the winter we'd have mm -hmm. beef and noodles and we'd have fresh sausage for breakfast. And, and people today said you can't can meat probably. I know they said you couldn't how could you eat that if she poured grease over that sausage well it was delicious <laughs> and I'm I haven't died from cholesterol yet and neither did dad or grandma. Kind of coming around to the circle of food when you were at school there weren't any lunch programs with it. Oh no, there? we packed our own. We had our lunch box or we had a paper bag. And I really don't know what we drank because we didn't take anything to drink. I don't know. We just had water maybe? I don't remember. Later on, we had the milk program, but when we first started, I don't remember having the milk program. Because I thought it was a treat to get the chocolate milk when well, we went to school. Good. When I went to the Northside School, the only drinking fountain that I recall was in the basement. I remember the drinking fountain since you mentioned that. And that's probably what, what we did. We drank our water with our lunch because I don't remember. Do you remember what Mom fixed for you for lunch? Well, yes. Of all things, bologna sandwiches. <laughs> and they wouldn't let you do that today for nothing, but we didn't die from that either. <laughs> But peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and and bologna and usually an apple. Cookies. Mom always had homemade cookies she mm -hmm. sent. That was about it. We didn't have potato chips. I know that. <laughs> Don't remember any potato chips. Do you remember, and it may have been, what year did you go to the north side? I started in 1950. Okay. 
the uh, stamp program would have been finished then. Yeah, there was a I don't remember that. Savings program, mm -hmm. it was a war. Right, war, no. The, uh, the thing with the interaction of, of students and all, then you went from Ohio, you said, to South School. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a beautiful old building, too. Yes, it was. But I liked the North School better. I don't know why. I thought it was a neater building than the South School, but maybe because that's just because where I started. In, in second grade, I had Mrs. Cork for my teacher, Mrs. Phoenix Cork. She was my first grade teacher also. And then, well, that was my second grade. And then in third grade, I had Mrs. Buckner, maybe. Did I? I think. Fourth grade, I know, was Laverne Adams, and I loved her. She was my favorite all-time grade school teacher. And fifth grade, I had Murdy Melton. And in sixth grade, I had Hannah Arbuckle. Hannah was stern, too. <laughs> From South School in, did you go to that place up Junior on? Junior high, and we were the first class to go into that I new building. That. In seventh grade, we were able to go into the new junior high building. Mr. Lazier was my homeroom teacher, Stanley Lazier. Mm -hmm. I remember the name. And... In eighth grade, I don't remember who my homeroom teacher was. Then I went on to high school. My favorite all teachers out there was Mrs. Ralston and Mrs. Bush. They were my two favorites. And Mrs. Hutchins, of course. You got to put uh -huh. her in there, too. But Mrs. Ralston was my home ec teacher and Mrs. Bush was my business teacher, and I, that's something I remember from high school. I took home ec, and in the summertime, you always had a home ec, a home uh, project that you did in the summertime, and Mrs. Ralston and Mrs. Schaffner would come out to the house to inspect and make sure that you were doing it, and I'm sure they did that on their own. I'm sure they didn't get paid to do that. They did that on their own. But they always came together. Sometimes I would have a cooking project or sometimes sewing, sometimes flower garden. There was always a project you had in the summertime. And I thought that was very, very special for the teachers to come to your house. Sure. And that thought carries through today to probably some of the things you do too, doesn't it? Oh, like yes. gardening? Oh, yes. It got planted back sure. there? Sure. What was your favorite subject in school? I like typing. I guess that's why I like Mrs. Hutchins. I like typing. I never was good at math. I'll turn that around and what was your least favorite subject? Probably math. <laughs> <laughs> I just I never was a very fond person of schooling. That's why I didn't go on to college, I guess. I just didn't. But you got through that building up there. Yes, I got through it. Trick. I got through it. And uh, if you don't care to mention, what year did you graduate from? Uh, In 62, 1962. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what then? I went to work when I was a senior in high school, I went to work at the Clark County Title Company on the school mm -hmm. program and worked for Howard Young. Okay. And then after I graduated from high school, I went to work at Valsicol, and I worked at Valsicol for two years in the office. We just had our Valsicol reunion well, that's right. yeah, that's a few weeks ago, and it's just surprising how few of the people that I worked with are left. They're just about all gone. And then I went to work at General Telephone Company down here on the corner of 6th and Pine as a switchboard operator and that's where I was working when I got married. I'm glad you mentioned that about the switchboard operator 
because uh, I, as a youngster, I don't know why, but my dad, I know I was with him one time, went in, and I was so fascinated, with, and I was always fascinated by electricity and cords and stuff anyway, but I was just mesmerized almost by all of the plugs and the lights flashing and mm -hmm. all, and the beehive of activity there. That was one of my favorite jobs, was at the phone company. I wasn't there, but maybe six months, but I really enjoyed that job. Met a lot of nice gals that worked there, and most of them are gone too. They're just about all gone. At Anna, that time... Anna B. Cooper was one of the girls I worked oh, with there. Okay. And I still keep in touch with Anna B. See, she was in my wife's class, I believe. Okay. What, uh, was that still at a period of time that people did not have, at least in the country, did not have a number? It was still longs and shorts and things of that nature for for getting them on the line or had no, they converted to they numbers? No, they still had numbers. I mean, they had numbers then, and what we were doing was the long distance part. Okay. Was When people made long distance calls, they had to go through the switchboard to do that. Okay. What about emergencies? Was that a, still a place where people Gosh. would call if there was a fire? or I mean, they didn't call 911, obviously. But if there was an emergency, did they just call the operator? You know, I don't remember, Damien, about that. Maybe they did. I they surely did. They, did. they they would have had to. Because that would have been the central point, too. You know, I'm thinking now that you said that there was one girl that that's all she did was take the emergency Ooh. calls, if I remember, Ooh, if it okay. came in. Because you just dialed the operator at that time, mm -hmm. and I think there was maybe one girl that just took those emergency calls. I don't know if that would have been possible. I'm not sure. That made sense, I guess. How did you get, was it strictly memory and training to get used to where the plugs were and how to efficiently handle a call? Damien, you're talking over 50 years. I don't know. <laughs> I don't recall. I just know I enjoyed doing it, but I don't remember the training we took to do it. Because to me, with all those little lights and plugs along there, but there had to be some method of rep repetition of understanding and knowing where to See, when I in. worked at Velsicol, though, I worked on the switchboard out there part-time, too. That was part of my job out there, and it was the type where you had the little levers that went up and down. Okay. And maybe I kind of caught on some of that to carry with me. I don't know. And I'm sure you never plugged someone into the wrong number, did you? Well, I would not hope I didn't. I don't know. I probably did, but I don't <laughs> would hope I didn't, but we may have. I'm sure we did at times. Do you know what year they phased out the switchboard? No, I you? don't. I've thought about that, and I wonder when they did do that, but Annabee could probably tell me, but I don't know for sure. Yeah, you should know. interview Annabee. She would be good. Yeah. Got, I'll mention that name. Um, from, you said you got married, I believe, while you were, were there. Mm -hmm. How did you happen to meet that young man? At my sister's wedding. Okay. He was the best man, and I got the best man. <laughs> and my brother-in-law doesn't like for me to say that. <laughs> but that's where we met, was at Kay and Ted's wedding. Did you know each other from school? No, not, not at all. Not Never all. saw him in my life till the night of rehearsal. <laughs> no. So what year were you married then? 64. 64. Okay. And where did you settle in as far as living at that time? On South 5th Street, okay. 708 South 5th. And then we moved to 315 South 5th while we built our new home. And then we lived on Route 3 northwest of town in our home for 25 years. Hmm. And then we sold it and moved to town and lived up in Grandma Tarble's house for one year before we bought the Friedenberger house west of town and we lived there eight years out at Helen Jane and Glenn's oh, yeah. on the curve. Yeah. And then we, my dad passed away in 99 and in 201 we moved down on the home place. We've been there ever since. 
So you've kind of made a loop. I'd, country, I have. town, and back to country. Mm -hmm. Prefer country. What, uh, what are some of your earlier memories of Marshall? I can remember going to the Strand Theater one time and that was to see a Ma and Pa Kettle movie. <laughs> That's the only time I ever remember going there. We did most of our shopping at, uh, grocery shopping at Ralph and Selma George's because it was on the way in town and that's where we did most of our grocery shopping. Uh, later on we shopped at Kroger here on Main Street, which later, yes, where we are now, the little library, right. And uh, we always, our family always went to Mars Funeral Home when we had a death. That's where we always went, was mm -hmm. to Benny's. And I always said when I died, I was going to go to Benny. And one day I got this light bulb came on and I thought, I hope I don't, I hope I don't go before Benny does. Because <laughs> Benny's older than I am. Uh -huh. and Benny's long gone and I'm still here. And the funeral home's long gone too, uh -huh. so... Uh, as other businesses, I don't really, as I said, we were pretty self-sufficient out there on the farm. We didn't need a whole lot of things, so we didn't come to town a lot. Had bread, milk, butter, and what else? Eggs. Did you? you had all you needed. needed. That's all the fruits and vegetables we needed. And At the George's uh, grocery store down there, what, uh, is there anything particular you remember about always buying there? Are you were anxious to visit some, did she have a candy jar? I don't remember it. Okay. I don't remember it if they did. It's usually kids and candy yeah, kind of go together. but I don't remember that. In second grade, when we were at the Ohio school, sometimes mom would give me a little bit of money and then believe me, it was a little. And us, some of us kids would walk over to the crock grocery there next to the uh, mm -hmm. lumber yard, and we'd get the little penny candy. But I had someone else mention that. That's my only thought of candy is going over there. I remember the Dunkel nursing home there. Yeah. I guess it wasn't really called nursing home. It was just a home, but it was Miss Dunkel ran Dunkel it. Dunkel home, I think. It was the Dunkel home, and then it was the grocery, and then the lumber yard. I loved the lumber yard. I used to go there with Dad. Old Mr. Clapp and Mr. Gahave. Oh, yeah. I remember them well. See, Ernie Gahave was my wife's Yes, uncle. to be related, sure. Mm -hmm. Well, see, the Gahaves are related to me. You may not realize that, Damien, but my Grandma Amaker's sister, Gertrude, married Frank Gahabe. And she's buried down here in the Catholic Cemetery. Mm -hmm. Where Frank is, I don't know. He remarried and had several children. And he may be buried up in Indiana I'm with his sure. second wife. Well, her sister would probably know. She's been digging and digging and digging into genealogy. The only one history. left of that family is Paul up at Paris, Paul Gehaba. He just Paris. passed away. Did he? I think just a month, couple months ago. I have wondered. I have not mm -hmm. called him, and I've wondered about Paul. He was a sweet man. What do you remember about Charlie Clapp? I just thought he was a neat old man. I don't really remember that much okay. about him. Just remember them being on, always being in there. He always went in that west door of the lumber yard, and they were always in there. Mm -hmm. Pot belly stove and yes. bins and nails. Yes, <laughs> that's what I remember. In your living in the country and all, what about transportation? Did you still have any horses no. when you were growing up, or did you? Strictly no. cars. We were strictly and cars and trucks and tractors. Okay. They might have been old, but that's what they were. Did your dad have a particular favorite kind of car? Buick uh, and yes. Packard. He loved the old Packards. Buicks and Packards were his favorite. Those were gorgeous. 
And my grandpa loved Studebakers. And my grandpa Ohm, of course, was a Chrysler fan because Uncle Ralph was in the business, so he always drove Chryslers or... Do you remember how many car dealerships there were about that time in Marshall? I think we had five. Might have been. I don't remember. So there's a Hudson dealership on the west. Yes, there was the Hudson. And Percy Stanfield had the Studebaker. There was a Ford. And then there was the Chrysler dealership and then the Buick Chevrolet. Okay. So, I, I didn't come to town enough to really keep track of those. My dad don't, I don't remember dad ever having a new car. They were always used, so we didn't go to the dealers much, I guess. I don't know where he bought his cars. Do you remember making an expedition to a town called Terre Haute at all? <laughs> a few times. We didn't go a lot. The two times a year that I remember going, we usually went to get new clothes for school, and we usually went to get an Easter outfit. How about Christmas shopping? Maybe there? I We went. I remember all of the uh, animated figures in the windows downtown in Terre Haute always intrigued me at Christmas time. I don't remember the shopping. I just remember seeing all of those uh, decorations that were so pretty at Christmas. One time we had a 1950 Buick. It was yellow. And we were coming home from Terre Haute on Old 40, of course, and out there east of Livingston, down over the hill, we it was Mother and Kay and I, and we blew a tire. And Mom pulled off there at this road on the north side, and this car came by, and it was Harry Baker. Big man. I was a little girl. And Mom was <laughs> trying to change the tire on that car. Oh, dear. And it was on the side where the traffic was, of course. And Harry told her, he said, now, Nora, he said, I'm going to pick this car up. And he said, you slide that wheel off and get this other one on. And he walked behind that car and took, backed up to it and took both hands. And he picked that car up enough that my mom could get that wheel off and get the other one on. I don't think <clears throat> I'd ever seen a man with that big of hands or that strong. <laughs> But I always remembered that. So your mother actually changed the tire. Well, then. she she took the, we had the spare and she had it out. <coughs> Excuse me. And he picked the car up and she wheeled it off, pulled it off and pushed it back on. And then he let it down and he helped put it back on. Because <laughs> he was <coughs> your guardian angel. He was our day. guardian angel that day. He was a big man. And I still remember those big hands, <laughs> how big they were. So in your transition from working to uh, a married family, um, and you lived in several different uh, different places, and did you quit working then at that time? Oh no, I've I've worked ever since I ever since I was in high school. I've worked at Tasty Freeze. I've worked at Dairy Queen, Supermat. Okay. Uh, worked for. Casey Radio, worked for Paris Radio as a local news reporter for both of those stations. Uh, worked for King's Catering. There was a, a year, maybe two years, I would go to work at Supermed at 7 in the morning. I worked till 11 in the office. I would get off go to Dairy Queen and work from 11 to 2 and get off and go to work at King's Catering and we might get home at 1 in the morning yeah. and get up the next day and do it all over again. And I wonder why I'm tired and worn out after working three days in, three jobs in one day, several mm -hmm. days at a time. But I was young. Quite a contrast to what most uh, young families do today. Yes. I tried to do most of my jobs while the kids were in school. Like I worked at the school cafeteria different times, so the kids were in school and I could work there. And, oh, I don't know. I've done other. I've done a lot of odd jobs. I used to tell people that some people 
worked the same job all their life and they changed husbands. I was the opposite. I kept the same husband. I worked I like a lot of jobs for my variety in life. <laughs> well, going to your husband then, what, uh, what all has he been doing? In well, he worked for 42 years at Quality Lime, retired from there after 42 years. He was in the Army for three years, and then he came home and went to work at Quality Lime and worked there 42 years. And he and I rode a lot of motorcycles in our lifetime. We've both retired from it now. It's not safe with people out there on the road on their cell phones and what have you, but between the two of us, we... He had his and I had mine and we rode over a hundred years between the two of us and we figured if we rode over a hundred years without any scrapes it was time to hang it up. You're fortunate. We would not heal well today. Well, with the insurance company, do they kind of frown on that too? No, really. There, there's good no. insurance out there just for motorcycle riders oh. and if you're a good rider, you get a, you know, it's okay. That uh, I did the I worked for the Census Bureau in 1979 as a pre-lister, and I <clears throat> rode probably a good fourth of Clark County on that motorcycle doing pre-listing. Well, you're right. I think it was a little safer on the road then than it is and now. It was definitely a lot safer then. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even go to some of the houses today in a car that I went to on a motorcycle in that, back in that mm -hmm. year because things have just changed too much with the drugs. And There was a couple times I was even scared then. There was one house I went to that didn't have a front porch. It had a bale of straw that you stepped up on to knock on the door. And I got up to the door and I looked over to my left and there was a tree with a blanket under that tree and a pair of boots sitting on that blanket. And it was right by a cornfield and I knew whoever belonged to those boots was in that cornfield watching me and I didn't take long leaving. <laughs> was a census of one? <laughs> For the, well, I don't know how many were there, but they weren't going to get counted oh, by my. me. Oh, my. My. But I, I had some close calls. I went to the Archer house and that's when, who would have had that then? Charity? Probably Charity. Probably yes. Charity. Mm -hmm. And it was just men that lived there and a lot of them had a drinking habit. Mm -hmm. And I was down in the foyer and this man was very intoxicated and I was scared. And if it hadn't been for Russell Kearns, I don't know what I would have done because Russell came to my rescue. And he went with me to every room in the building so I would not be alone. Because that's all that was living there was men. Do you remember how many were living there at that time? And it was 79? There would have been in 79, probably, oh, I'm counting down the halls. There was probably, I'd say, eight or ten. Because mm -hmm. I know the upstairs used to be divided mm -hmm. up into a number of small, in, small yes, rooms. Yes, they were small rooms, and I'd say mm. there was probably a total of eight or ten lived in there. But Russell, I always felt, was my guardian angel that day because he came to my rescue. I was scared, and to think I was just right downtown. I guess I could have bolted for the door, but I didn't. Well, see, at that time, the police department would have been right across yes, the street, Yes, it was. Too. Yes, it was. I don't know. So there's some things that you've, quote, <coughs> done in the past that you wouldn't care to repeat today, is that right? Right, right. I know I worked for Welcome Wagon as the hostess oh, for about three years, and I went to make this call one time, and the cleanest place I could find to sit was a footstool, in the floor in the middle of the floor so I chose to sit there and I kept hearing this thumping upstairs and I was talking to this man and woman and pretty soon the man says oh that's just my ex-wife up there and I'm going okay <laughs> he's downstairs with his wife and his ex-wife's upstairs thumping around but I didn't <laughs> think too much of it <laughs> you know you just take it in your stride and I went to make a call on this 
girl down in the federal housing, and that was so sad. She had moved here, and I don't know where she had lived, but all of her house plants had frozen in the house. Here. Where she was living? Where she was living, and she had moved into the housing, and I felt so badly for her that I went home and got some of my house plants and took to her later on. But she just had blankets to the window because she didn't have any curtains or anything. And it was, sometimes you got into some really sad situations. But I, that day sticks out in my mind because I called on her and not only did we call on new people in town, but we called on people that were having new babies. And my next stop was out at Gulf Lakes. So I went from rags to riches that day. So extreme to the other. Mm -hmm. There was an experience. I loved that job too. I mean, it wasn't one of my favorite, but and I And that's liked. a wonderful service where we used to live. As soon as we moved in, they called on us. And that's a wonderful service. And I thought of that. Is that still you in operation? I wondered the other day. I thought I should get on the internet and see if that even exists anymore. Because we have a lot of new people moving into Marshall. Not every day, but well, it would be nice to have them welcome to the community. I've suggested that to the chamber one day, and they mm -hmm. said that a lot of the... Uh, the two realtors in town, give them packets, giving them information. And when you think about it, we don't have the businesses we used to, and they always gave gifts to them. And see, you don't, we had businesses all up and down Main Street here. But still, uh, uh, something from the community welcoming you. A personal, that's yeah, what I thought, a got personal something. A lot of something. services that are provided too. What? What uh, have you been doing to keep uh, Kenny busy now that he's retired? I don't know. He does a lot of his ham radio. He likes to do that. Of course, we rode motorcycles for years and went lots of places on those to entertain ourselves, but he does a lot of ham radio operating now okay. and keeps himself busy. I asked him the other day. We were out. I was mulching leaves and he was picking up hedge apples to get out of the way and we went over to set in the glider and I said, we complain about being tired, but what would we be doing if we weren't doing this? And he said, exactly. Be sitting in a chair and we don't want that. Better for your health. That's right. Going. Is there, uh, going back to school and all, were there some hobbies that you may have developed then that maybe you still participate in or? No. Not really, that I can think of. I do enjoy the history anymore, more so than I did back then. I wasn't into the history then, which I am now. But uh, I have books after books after books at home that I've compiled of Marshall history, Clark County, family. Great. Even, I have a big book on Terre Haute and Paris things that interest me of history that I've compiled. And you continue to keep them up to date then? Yes, I'm trying. After you put them together? I'm trying. I may not do as good as I used to, but I try. I do want to say that my, see, I, am, I Kenny and I were charter members of the uh, Heritage Trail Abate chapter. Oh, yeah. And we still belong, but we're not really active since we don't ride anymore. And I joined DAR in 1971 because my, I think it's four greats back, my great, 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 great grandfather, James Ingram, fought in the Revolutionary War. So I have that link to history. And then my great, great grandpa, Jasper Henderson, fought in the Civil War. And there used to be a picture of him in his uniform that hung on my great uncle Alan's living room wall, and no one in the family knows what happened to that. After Uncle Alan died, that picture disappeared, and none of us know. We, we, we never did find out what happened to that picture. But he was in the Civil War, and he's buried down at the Dean Cemetery. At what cemetery? The Dean, down off Zion Road. Down by Polly, yeah. where Polly Dean used to live. Mm -hmm. But the last time, well, not the last time, but several years ago, the groundhogs got in there and just uprooted everything, and the stone has fallen over. And I've been trying to 
figure out how to get that cemetery back up in shape. It needs some attention. About 45 years ago, I went down there and cut all the brush out of it and cleaned it up, but that didn't last. You got to stay at it. And I didn't. <laughs> I got busy with other things. See, so we've all got so many modern conveniences around us here, at home, every place. Is there something that you say, I just could not live without that modern convenience? I know what I can't live with, and this is this social media. Amen. This just wears me out the way people do not communicate. They come for a family dinner and they're all on the cell phones pecking. Mm -hmm. You go to the doctor's office and you used to sit and talk to the people in the waiting room. Now they're pecking. You don't, they don't even look at you. They don't make eye contact with you. And people are getting in trouble with that Facebook too. I do not approve of Facebook. The computer is good in its place. place. <laughs> but there's a time and place for everything. So is there something around your home, everything in your home, then you could say, oh, you can take it and I could still... I probably would say <laughs> that. I'm not a big TV watcher. I like to read. Can't retain what I read, but I like to read. I used to retain it, but I don't anymore. <laughs> uh, something I just... I don't even own a cell phone. Kenny has one. I don't, I don't have a cell phone. Uh, and the only reason he has it is when we're out on the road. Yeah. He carry, we carry it when we leave home just as an emergency if you need it. Uh, something I couldn't live without. Probably the telephone. And there's days I could live without it. <laughs> Two tin cans and a string. Yeah. There. <laughs> But most of these modern conveniences, I still mash my potatoes with a potato masher instead of an electric mixer. And, and they taste mighty good. And they that taste way better too. that way. I don't know. Sue, is there some historical event or something that's taken place in the world that's really made an impact on your thinking? I don't know about the world, but the, the country, Our country is in a mess. We should never be in this financial crisis we're in, and neither should our state. You and I both know, Damien, that you can't just keep spending money that you don't have and continue. It just doesn't work. It doesn't seem to get better. So it doesn't that get me. better. And you put in, you think you're electing someone that might, but it just doesn't get better. It just keeps going downhill. Well, Sue, it's been a delight visiting with you, and I think you finally found out that, well, there, you have a lot more in that past history and some things that you like to talk about than what you thought. Uh, I have one last question that I usually ask everyone. If you're visiting somewhere way off in some other part of the country or another country or wherever it might be, and you said, I'm from Marshall, Illinois, and they said to you, where is that and what's that all about? What would you tell them about Marshall? Well, I would tell them it's a quaint little town, mid-state mid Illinois, on the east side, and a little small town living can't be beat. Well said. <laughs> and well. I might add that I do have several buildings at my house that are full of history. A lot of it's family and I feel it's a tribute to my parents and grandparents and my ancestors and a privilege that I have been able to inherit so many articles from my past. Are those items then that you plan to continue to pass down to the family? I haven't decided what I'm going to do with them. They're just, I have all these buildings and they're on display and I can go out there and enjoy them instead of them being boxed up in a closet or somewhere. Out where you can see and observe them. Yes. And I wish more people would take advantage of the fact that I have those, but for some reason I can't get the word out. 
I was going to say, are people aware of that? I have. I was, I was not aware of it. I've had open houses before, but it doesn't seem to. But I do think this generation doesn't appreciate history like they should, in my opinion. I think sometimes we have to kind of, again, make that loop. And uh, as we get older, I think we all appreciate it more. I don't know about all, but some well, of us. Most. <laughs> some well, of as us. I say, Sue, it's been a delight visiting with you. And this is not for today, tomorrow, but this is a part of history in the future. Someone's going to come along and say, gee, I didn't know that about Sue. So again, thanks again. I just enjoyed visiting with you so okay. much. Appreciate you taking out your time to, to be with us. Oh, well, you're welcome.